Should you take the cleaning leads that you got from Groupon and work them offline? That's a great question. I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, I get asked this question about 30 times a week from house cleaners that are coming through our training program, and they want to get the leads because the leads are coming to them, and they want to take the leads and then pull them off the network and then work them on their own. And they always run into a couple of the same problems. And I want to highlight those today by reading this email, and then I want to unpack it and share with you what's going wrong. The email says, A few months ago, I signed up to do this gig work on a popular app that allows clients to hire people for various different categories. I've actually made more money cleaning houses than I do at my regular job. Well, a couple of months into the gig work, customers began asking me if I would work off the platform. And I said yes for regular recurring customers only. Well, I get paid that day or, or so I thought. Rather than having to wait over a week on the platform, it saves the client surcharges and fees. Well, here's my issue. I didn't know I was supposed to be getting signed agreements. And of course, the first time I cleaned, the clients paid almost immediately. The second time, I sent a request the day after the service and they did pay. The third service is where they seem to think that I'm working for free. Yeah. My messages, my emails, and my reminders get totally ignored. I send polite texts, I request Venmo, then a reminder, and I get no reply and no payment. All the while, I can see that they're paying other people on the app while they are ignoring me. They respond to my texts otherwise. What am I supposed to do, Angela? I'm absolutely fed up. I feel totally used and disrespected, and I can't figure out what to say to them at this point because what I really want to say is not nice. I don't know how to word it so that they'll take me seriously without me being rude or upsetting them. Okay, so here's what happened. When the company, whatever the company was that has the app hired you, they hired you as an independent contractor. And so the app, which is just the vehicle that connects the homeowners and the house cleaners, the app is just the vehicle. You are an independent contractor. In order to make this happen, what they did was they had to pay for a lot of advertising discount codes, coupon codes to get the homeowners to come to the platform and to hire a house cleaner. And so they are paying a fee, which is part of the money that you're going to make. Now, when you use an app like that, you're going to make anywhere from 40 to 60% of the actual price of the job. And so it's easy to say, well, if I worked for myself, I'd make 100%. That may be true. But behind the app is an entire company that does a whole bunch of things that you have to do if you go get the job yourself. So if you're going to go get the job yourself and you're going to make 100% of the revenues, I recommend you not use the app at all and that you go find your own customers and you train your customers how you work. Because what's happening when you go online and you use the app is you're finding people that are already trained a certain way to use the app. They're not trained your way. They're trained the app's way. Okay. So what happens is, and I've used these apps a lot myself in my business, we're in the gig economy and everybody now is using apps like this. Here's how it works. I need a service. So I go to the app and I say, I'm looking for this service. And they say, hey, how about this one? And so you look on the platform and you find the people with the highest ratings and the lowest price, right? That's how we search for, for business. With that in mind, we agree to a particular price and we put our credit card in and the money is held in escrow. My question to you is, do you have an escrow account where you can hold the customer's funds? And if they are not satisfied, you will give the funds back to them, right? There's a certain guarantee and a certain security that comes with using an app that you do not provide unless you are a well-established business and you're doing it a particular way. Now, you mentioned you have no contracts. Well, guess what? The app does. And so now they have a contract with the app. They also have an automated email program. And chances are maybe you don't have that either. So what happens is once a job has been accepted, all of a sudden emails start flying back and forth to make sure that the customer is satisfied, that the house cleaner showed up on time, that they did a great job. And for whatever reason, they're going to contact the house cleaner and they're going to go, hey, did you do the job? Was the customer easy to work with? Rate your satisfaction. What happened? Are you ready to get paid? Did you finish the job? Is the job done? And you say, yeah, the job's done. I'm turning in what are called deliverables. I'm, I'm saying the job is done. They're going to email the customer a bunch of times and say, hey, how is the communication? How was the house cleaner? Did they show up on time? Did they do the work that they were promised? Did you do a walkthrough of the house? Are you satisfied with the work? Can you approve and release the funds? 
Okay, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens in between. We call that HR. They are the HR company that's managing the deal between the house cleaner and the homeowner, right? And so when you take the job offline, what you're saying is I can fill in all of those gaps. There's a fee for that. The next thing is this. If you don't have a pay up front option, you've now become a collection agency where you do have to send reminders and texts and follow up with a customer and ask them to do the walkthrough. And if a customer is busy and they got home late the night before, they probably haven't done the walkthrough yet. And if they don't do the walkthrough, the company, the app is going to hound them and say, hey, listen, it's been a few hours. It's been a few, you know, a day. It's been two days. It's been three days. Where's the money? Did you do the walkthrough? They're going to keep harassing that customer until the customer follows through on what they agreed to because there is a contract in place. When you are the house cleaner and you're the one that's collecting the money, you get to be that person. There's a fee for that. Okay, so once the money is processed, there's a merchant fee. And that means if they're paying with credit card, which most people do now, there's about a 3% transaction fee that goes back to Stripe or PayPal or Squared Up or whomever they're using for bank fee transactions. Okay. So there's about 3% that goes to that. You're not paying for that. The customer is or the company that runs the app is. And so you have to be able to jump in and fill that gap because now you will be paying that. All right. You're paying for the advertising. You're paying for the HR. You're paying for the merchant fees and you have to be the person that enacts the customer satisfaction. So if the customer is not satisfied and there's a satisfaction guarantee, yes, you still have to go back either way and do it, but you're also the person that has to manage those conversations. Now, once the job is done, the customer's satisfied, you got the money, yay, job is not over. The app will jump in and they will say, can you send us a rating and review? They need it for a couple of reasons. They need it to boost the online visibility of the app and they need it to boost the online visibility of the house cleaner. The more house cleaners they have with better ratings and reviews, the more jobs and the more homeowners that are, are going to go through the program because people will hire them back. Okay. And so you have to have your own rating and review program, which is now PR and this is not HR. Okay. So now you have to wear all these other hats. The purpose of using an app is if you're a small startup company and you don't have all these other hats that you're wearing as an entrepreneur and you don't have all those other systems in place. Go work the app, stay with the app, work with the jobs you got through the app, and that's the end, okay? They're hiring you as an independent contractor. Every single time you take the job and you go offline and try to do it on your own, you run into problems unless you have a set, a set of systems in place. And I don't recommend you do that because even if you do have a set of systems in place, what you're doing is you're taking a person trained to use the app. And so when you don't collect money up front, or if it's not the exact same way, chances are you're going to run into snags every single time. And you're going to find a person that's looking for the highest ratings and the lowest price. So you can't negotiate price anyway. Okay. So there are a whole bunch of things that malfunction when you try to do that. I don't know. I'm going to call it a shortcut. It's not a shortcut. It actually causes a whole lot more headache for you because what happens now is the customer's still going to get called back over and over and over again and go, hey, did you find another house cleaner? Did something go wrong? You used to use our service. They're going to go, no, I, I hired the same house cleaner. I just went offline and I'm not using your platform anymore. That tanks your ratings and it's, it, it ruins your reputation, right? They don't want to work with you anymore either. And so I, I just don't recommend it for so many reasons. If you use an app, use an app and let that be a source of leads for your business and always work those leads on the app. If you're going to go get your own customers, go get your own customers and have all of your systems in place. But don't use an app as a source of your leads so that you can take those leads and go somewhere else. It's a really weird way to do business that really kind of backpedals all of your productivity. I don't recommend it at all. Anyway, so that is my suggestion for how that works. All right, I want your questions and comments in the notes below. And if you think that was interesting, watch this next video because this one is also going to save you a whole bunch of headaches that you did not know you might be creating for yourself. Until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.